Good afternoon uh, to all and uh, the speakers as well as uh, the audience who has uh, uh, logged in today. I would like to welcome you all to the uh, second uh, Tech Talk session, uh, which is being conducted by Solution Buggy. Uh, the second session for today is on plastic recycling. Uh, what we'll be looking at is mainly an industry overview. What are the current market trends for recycled plastics? The entire process in a step-by-step -step manner, uh, the granulation, extrusion, and pelletization. And finally, uh, you know, what is the target market that anybody who is manufacturing this can look at? Who will be the basically the buyer of your finished product? Uh, before I begin, a quick introduction to Solution Buggy. Uh, we are uh, an online platform. In fact, uh, uh, India's largest uh, online platform for the MSME sector in manufacturing uh, uh, domain. Uh, we have about 10,000 experts on the platform. Have uh, completed uh, more than 3,100 projects across India over the last six years. Uh, and when I say projects, it could be anything from a one-day consulting assignment uh, or a training program, and it could be it could be even a uh, setting up of an industry right from concept to commercialization stage. Uh, it includes mainly basic market research, product identification, new product development, retail project report, machinery procurement, brand setup, commissioning, uh, supply chain management, sales and marketing, etc. Uh, I'm Guru Prasad Bangle, uh, director at uh, Solution Buggy. I have about 20 plus years of experience in consulting. I am a BE and MBA from uh, I am Bangalore. Uh, I have successfully sold my last startup to Magic Bricks in 2016. Uh, the reason uh, for today's webinar is uh, mainly to understand what is the uh, market potential of uh, you know plastic recycling and how either an existing industry or a new entrepreneur can look into this sector and uh, what are the pitfalls and uh, what are the challenges that you'll have to encounter and what are the opportunities that exist in this sector. Uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, three stellar speakers over the next 90 minutes uh, who will be talking more on this. Uh, the, I'll be just introducing the speakers now and then I'll uh, uh, you know call in the next uh, speaker to present his uh, uh, PPT. So first, uh, I have uh, Mr. Rajkumar Mathur, who is a plastipreneur uh, mentor with uh, almost 30 plus years of vast knowledge in the manufacturing MNC, uh, in, especially in the domain of plant installation and commissioning and in supply chain management. He is uh, helping uh, new entrepreneurs and uh, you know existing organizations in the domain of plastics and packaging to start uh, or diversify into uh, newer sectors uh, and also upgrade existing businesses uh, uh, you know into uh, with better process uh, with better processes uh, i welcome you mr rajkumar thank you mr guru for a nice introduction yeah next i have uh, mr purushottam madoni who has about 20 plus years of experience in the polymer industry uh, he has about seven uh, U.S. patents and five international publications uh, to his credit. Uh, has vast experience in polymer formulations, application development, and uh, also in business development. Um, he is a founder director at Ecolastic Company and uh, has developed and uh, successfully scaled up uh, starch-based, uh, uh, you know, completely decompostable decomp uh, and biodegradable plastics, and. Uh, we have worked on a, a quite a few projects with uh, both Rajkumar and uh, Purushottam as well. Uh, I welcome you, Mr. Purushottam. Thank you, Prabhu, sir. Next, I have uh, Mr. Shiv uh, Rao, uh, who is uh, basically a B.Tech in uh, computer science with uh, 23 plus years of experience uh, across almost 12 countries uh, in oil and gas mining and infrastructure projects. Uh, currently based out of Gurugram, he has founded uh, three R zero waste uh, uh, venture uh, during the COVID time and uh, has catered to 175 plus clients. Uh, he's impacted uh, almost uh, uh, seven, uh, about uh, 
the seven, seven hundred thousand uh, citizens for spreading awareness mainly on waste management, uh, not only in India but in other countries as well. Um, I welcome you, uh, Mr. Shiv Rao. Thank you very much for the invitation. Yeah. So with that, I would uh, now call upon Mr. Rajkumar Mathur uh, to walk us uh, through the uh, potential of plastic recycling and what kind of opportunities uh, an entrepreneur can look at. Over to you, Mr. Rajkumar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Guru Prasad, for a nice introduction. And uh, let us start. Uh, yes. Can we go for the next slide? Is next. Uh, this is a little bit uh, more detail. Uh, basically, the main motto is the, for your prosperity, we use uh, my knowledge for your prosperity of your existing business or if you want to set up something new. Next. Sharing my 30 plus experience in uh, setting up a plastic recycling, manufacturing plant of packaging, compostable, and plastic goods from research to find out. That is why. Uh, I work as a mentor, not as a consultant. And your updating growth uh, with my skills is one of my motto. And cost efficient solution and holding from stage to final product on time completion of project and establishing good manufacturing process. These are the some uh, part which we concentrate more. Next. So today we'll be covering uh, why the plastic recycling is required current challenges and opportunities, environmental impact of plastic waste, demand of recycled plastic products, business feasibility, selecting the appropriate locations, what we have to see basically, plant and machinery and some cost analysis, some example of the cost analysis. Next, please. Now let us understand why plastic recycling is necessary. First of all, uh, we should know that why there is a plastic pollution, why we are talking today for plastic recycling. Please click. So uh, I think you may be the part of these type of things, uh, traveling in a car and then throwing one packet like that one, dumping the garbage on some places. And people and corporation and put a board, don't put the garbage here, find, find that with CCTV and everything, everything, but even then people are dumping the garbage. This is the things normally, you uh, know, uh, people see and some of us may be the part of this type of things also. Uh, just click please. So where it is taking us? Next please. And this is a very common thing. We have seen it many places. Oh, we are dumping the garbage and then we can see these are very familiar pictures. You may, whenever you are traveling, whenever you are going out of your house and you see the areas, these are the areas. We dump the you know, uh, garbages and then the cow and the other animals are no. Uh, eating over there and then ocean we have seen uh, many ocean uh, animals which are you not know, suffering from all these plastic waste and then uh, pollution by the single use plastic and then so many campaigns stop plastic pollutions and all those things so these are the very common scene which we have seen which we see daily when you are committing to our works when we are going to somewhere when we are traveling by road a train even uh, uh, by air also whenever we are landing the plane uh, and then you can see many airports, nearby airports, you can see these type of things particularly. So this is a very common scene which everybody see, saw it on daily basis. So let us understand why the plastic recycling is important. Basically, why it is important because it keeps the ecosystem less polluted. Recycling plastic is a good alternative that helps reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. Okay, because producing a plastic, pure plastic, requires a large quantity of greenhouse gases okay next is the india generates almost 3 30 lakhs ton of the plastics every year and recycling help basically that doesn't uh, go metal to the landfills or the oceans this require a uh, very robust systems dependable on many things next Helps to give a new meaning to the plastic waste. Plastic waste is more valuable than we ever think. We ever imagine. Uh, you know, uh, people are talk, uh, talking and discussing that this is a black gold. People call uh, plastic oils or plastic things as a black gold. They treat them as a black, black gold. 
it creates the jobs you know uh, you just think when you want to start a plastic recycling and you see the chain from rag picker uh, to the garbage collector to ulb the sorter the your plant operators and then uh, manufacturing it then you're selling it so this is the chain where you can create a lot of jobs okay and it's a uh, create a lot of innovation there are some i think dubai airport or somewhere uh, a famous uh, artist has created uh, the paintings beautiful painting from this plastic waste they have used the you no know, your buttons uh, they have used the straws they have used the you no know, woven sacks and they have used many other different kind of product which they have created beautiful sculpture out of that one and most of the some uh, important airports they have shown up all those innovative things and uh, creativity of these plastics is endless you can definitely worth a look and if you link with the plastic industry you should give the recycling as a importance next now some facts and figures do you know that uh, plastic industry is considered a big contributor to the economic growth but it gives you also the 15,342 tons plastic waste every day. And most of the people don't know what is to be done to that. But next click, please. It is estimated that recycling save at least seven yards of the space for every ton of the plastic recycled. This is a very important fact. And you know, the when the land filling is at same so much rate, we are no uh, land filling is filling is rapidly running out constant plastic production generates a considerable amount of greenhouse gases recycling plastic saves 80 percent of total energy used in production of the new plastic material this is a very important aspect you know energy saved is energy earned like that next please this is the data of year 2021 uh the state oblique union territory wise plastic waste generation this is published on the site of the central pollution control board telangana is supposed to be the uh, has highest contributing of 12 percent to the plastic waste generation then tamil nadu west bengal uttar pradesh and other states like that one next now what are the challenges and opportunities the challenges are they basically lack of knowledge lack of knowledge to the people how to dispose of the plastics so usually people throw it away and that comes to as a littering but people doesn't know that they can uh, segregate those plastic waste at home and send it to or sell it to the garbage collectors or the you no know, scrap dealers those guys and they can earn some amount of the money now there are things uh, that some entities has started collecting the waste uh, iocl recently has started uh, on their petrol pumps uh, to collect all those waste and they give you the credit amount or uh, equal amount of that uh, uh, scrap what you have submitted to them and you can use those credit to fill your petrol tanks. Then is the challenge is sorting is the challenge treatment and the quality of the uh, waste and the recyclers the technologies uh, still there are many product which is not recyclable so we are still lacking of the technologies but people are coming up with those technologies where all products can be recycled and selection of the right recycling plants people end up in purchasing some recycling plant they, uh, then they one time day they understand that they they can only recycle some special kind of the plastic out of that one now, what are the opportunities in India, Bharat? We are expecting in this year, 23, that 2.3 billion US dollar is going to be the plastic recycling industry. And growth potential is around CSER of 24% by 30, uh, uh, 2030. And that value is going to be 10.2 US billion dollars. Approximately 2.5 million tons plastic waste goes to landfill, and which is going to be 3.3% next year, uh, up to next uh, three, four years. Expected market is 18.5 million tons by T28, 2028. 3.4 million tons plastic waste generated every year. 1.02 is only recycled, and 2.38 million tons is every left left for recycling or goes for the landfills or the ocean fills. Next, please. Rajkumar ji, another 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is the across the globe. These are the challenges uh, for the plastic. Annually, almost 9% globally, the plastic waste is generated. 
by 2040 there will be 1.3 billion ton of plastic waste present in the environment globally 14% world plastic waste is recycled about 500 billion single use plastic bags are used worldwide every year and every single person uses more than 700 plastic bags per year 50% plastic which is being used is a single use whatever the plastic is being used everybody it is a 50% is only one time use so we see the houses we use the shampoo bottles and many bottles uh, many packaging which is being used and then discarded where many plastics can be reused if required 75% of all plastic produce has become waste norway has the highest pet recycling rate of 97% india is recycling 90% of the pet as on today next please now challenge and opportunity which is containing from the last slide uh, 60% 60% of the waste is recycled in india plastic waste mishandling is a significant concern in developing nations like india due to its ineffective waste management that is collection segregation treatment and disposal which is account for 71% of mishandled plastic in asia india is being a highly populated and ranked 12th as on today in mismanagement of plastic but it is expected to be fifth position by 2025 and the research is carried out by fiki and accenture india is assumed to lose over 133 billion dollars of plastic material value over for coming next 10 years until 2030 owing to unsustainable packaging out of which 75% value this 100 billion can be retrieved therefore recycling or upscaling or reprocessing plastic waste has become urgent to curb this mismanagement of plastic and migrate to negative impact of plastic consumption and utilization of from the environment so recycling of and reprocessing of plastic waste involves five types of processes next please rajkumar ji i think uh, you should spend more time on your slides where you are talking about uh, the setup of uh, plastic recycling plant so uh, uh, five types of plastic recycling basically uh, we take it uh, one is the upgrading uh, where we you know uh, make the granules and use them as a for the 3d printing pellets and uh, we can use the mlp the laminated pouches which is sort of a non recycling to make a you know weaving hand looms and uh, pet bottles can be converted into the threads which can be converted into uh, jackets and jerseys then recycling uh, it's a primary closed loop mechanical and chemical recycling you can do it means you collect the waste and uh, make a granules or chips out of that one downgrading is a basically go for a chemical recycling a pyrolysis gasification then waste to energy is basically plastic to liquid fuel gasoline diesels then rdf which is called plastic to solid fuel then waste to uh, to uh just to go back to please please waste to dump basically this goes to the uh, landfill and uh, if it is not landfill they're going to for the oceans next please now challenges are possibly again continue about 5.5 million ton of plastic waste reprocessed and recycled every year which is only 60% so you can understand uh, uh, more than 9 million ton of plastic waste is there in india 70% waste is reprocessed in registered or formal facilities 20% by informal sectors and rest 10% recycled at household level recycled at household means we are using the bottles on the bags uh, at home uh, to repack or to store uh, the things at our end 40% of plastic waste ends up being uncollected littered which further results into pollution which i am talking to in the beginning also which is talking the drains uh, if you people remember in the, almost uh, 10 years back there was a heavy flood in the mumbai and when the people find out the reason it was the basically the small polythene and uh, polythene which choked up all the drains 2.5 million tons plastic goes to landfill 1 million ton goes for incinerated in cement filling all those things so you can see 2.5 and 1 3.5 million tons plastic is every there available in india which can be recycled or reprocessed 
uh, thermoplastic basically this is to be corrected this is thermoplastic sdp pet and pvc etc which are recyclable constitute 94 percent of the total plastic we are generating and remaining six percent comprise other type of plastic which are multi-layer or thermocol now there was a uh, time uh, almost uh, two to three years back where the multi-layer plastic uh, let me tell you the multi-layer plastic is like the uh, Understand like that the pouches of the wafers or the chocolates or the grocery packaging means ready-made packets. What we are buying, uh, like a, you know, uh, your pouches packets or all those packages, those come through multi-layer uh, flexible packaging. Then uh, multi-layer also come for tetra packs, where one of the layer is the plastic rest, all is the paper and other uh, like uh, aluminium or sort of like that thing. So those comes to be the sixty percent, which is basically six uh, percent that. Uh, being difficult to recycle but nowadays the technologies are available people are converting uh, people are converting to do uh, multi-layer also in beautiful product i'll show you some products which are made of these uh, multi-layer plastic and uh, thermocol again this is a one of the uh, thing which is uh, nobody recycle it but technologies are coming up to recycle the thermocol also thermocol is mainly used for the packaging to give a cushioning effect, particularly for the electronic industries, home appliances, and uh, some medical devices also. Next, please. Now, products and material which is made of the plastic and contributed more. Uh, this is the chart which gives you the pie chart. This gives you the 18.6% is basically the chips and co confectionery bags. This is again a purely a multi layer part. Then, six. 11.9% is almost bottles and caps and lids. Different kind of bottles we use as the juices bottle and uh, uh, no, uh, the shampoo bottle, the conditioner bottles, medicine bottles and all those things. Then 10% is almost is the pet bottle. These are the three highest contributing things. Pet bottles means mostly the water bottle is the main contributing aspect. And out of these, 66% uh, is basically the material which is SDP and LDP. Rest is all those materials. Uh, polypropylene is 10%, PVC 4%, PET is 9%, polystyrene, again, those thermocol plates and uh, thermocol packaging. Others are the different kind of materials. So whatever the packaging we are using, these are the uh, percentage, what are the packaging we use, different kind of materials. And packaging use these materials to produce. Next, next please. This is the different uh, recycling rates and 94.1% is mechanical recycling. I'll show you what is the mechanical recycling. 5% uh, is energy recovery and alternate use. Hardly 0.83%, less than 1% is the chemical recycling. And uh, please note that the chemical recycling is going to be the more popular in coming time. Because mechanical recycling is already there. Chemical recycling gives you the very uh, value-added products I'll tell you in the uh, next slides about it. 45% is the basically the PVC metal. Please go back to half. Huh? Yes, correct. 20% is the SDP and 25% is LDP product, which is being uh, consumed to manufacture the uh, kind of products. Next, please. Now, let us understand what is the environmental impact of the improper plastic waste management. You see the plastic bag. It takes almost 20 years to you know, decompose or go back to the nature. Hardly it goes. Coffee mug, 30 years. Plastic is 200. Six pack plastic ring, 400 years. Water bottle, 450 years. Coffee mug, this is 500 years. Then plastic up, disposable diapers, plastic toothbrush, 500 years. You know? We throw the toothbrush every three months or four months and it goes to 500 years to decompose until we recycle it. Just click, please. So we have to recycle and educate people to stop littering the plastics. This is the best way to you know, save the planet. Just click one, please. If we are not taking any care, then we can see this beautiful sea. We see the many beautiful places, but dumped with these plastics. You know, this is the plastic thing, but there, there's a plastic garbage is there. Okay. Next, please. This is another impact what we see. 
you see the ocean lot of plastic and their poor uh, tortoise is going to know engulf this plastic product next click please this is we have seen i have deliberately hide the face of a girl uh, a young couple has taken a, you know, a photo shoot for their wedding in a pond which is filled up of the plastic garbage this was a news almost uh, i think 3 4 months back it was circulated on social media also and they took it uh, deliberately this photo shoot to you know, uh, you know make the people aware to educate the people there that this is the thing which is going to be the future for us there may not be the place where you can do the photo shoot for our kids and this is if we are not stop you have not stopping the littering if you are not starting recycling definitely this is going to happen one day when you will not find a clean water that's come the five more minutes yeah please next please next please this is the recycle market go back to one side please this is the recycle uh, market for global uh, by 2030 it is going to be 120 billion dollars which is growing to at the rate of 8.1 cagr next please attractive opportunities in recycle product asia pacific is uh, 120 billion as i told you earlier ban on import of uh, plastic waste and scrap in china favorable initiative to promote use of recycle plastic in developed countries increasing use in textile etc so these are the things next phase i'll skip this slide in india plastic market is going to be 5277 us million dollars by 2028 which is going at the rate of 5.6 percent cagr and recycling market is packaging where you can use the packaging construction textile automobile and other places next please these are the product which you can manufacture out of the plastic recycle this is of which i was talking to you uh, earlier these blocks are made of the mlp products these this is the house is made of these so this type of some sort of block which is used by bottles these are the paper blocks which is used by the plastics these are the shoes which is made by the uh, pet bottles these are the uh, school benches or no uh, garden benches which is made of the recycled plastic next this is very important everybody had talk about it and there was a so much news that uh, ms modi has bought the recycled uh, jacket uh, which is uh, made of the pet bottles and gifted by the indian oil corporations to him this was a talk in town and uh, recently i attended one uh, conference in amdavad where all the dignitaries was uh, uh, given the shawls and all shawls were made of one shawl made of 12 pet bottles next please so this is the market now what is the business feasibility uh, we have two type of plastic thermoplastic and thermoset thermoplastic is mostly the recyclable thermoset is a non recyclable what we consider as of today next please different kind of plastic uh, you may be seeing these type of uh, the numbers and recycling patterns uh, on the product what you are buying and these numbers denominates what is that one is for pets second for sdp third for pvc like that one seven is the others usually you see on the different kind of packaging products uh, like your paper chips and other things okay these are all our products which can be recycled and uh, reused uh is times of india has published this news that uh, indian market is going to be uh, 10 billion by uh, 30 as on today we are recycling 53% then by 2030 we are going to be the 79% like that one next please this is the uh, various cities in all the states uh, which are creating the uh, plastic uh, waste uh, every year 4059 metric ton is basically the per day we are uh, no creating the waste and these are the some important cities if you take the hyderabad is 199 then vijayawada 43 chennai 429 like that uh, and the bangalore 313 some major cities are like that one and uh, mumbai is uh, mumbai is 408 metric ton so these are the things which is available this is available on the website cpc next please top five plastic producing states are maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu uttar pradesh and karnataka rise of plastic consumption in india is going to be 1 lakh 78000 1 crore 78 lakh tons 
that is going to be the consumption by 2017, which is growing like anything. 15,342 tons plastic waste is generated every year, out of which 60% is only recycled. Next, please. This is the advanced uh, recycling of the process. Uh, I think we'll skip, we'll skip in next slides. Please go to the next slides. This is the mechanical recycling, uh, where it coll collects the uh, material, it goes for sorting, then shredding, means you make a chips out of it. Then it is going for washing and drying. And then by extrusion, you create the pallets, and those pallets are sold, or people, you can manufacture your own product, which I show you, like a brand benches and the, you know, uh, uh, the shoes or the threads, or whatever you want to manufacture, you can manufacture those products, or you can sell those granules to the, uh, processors who are manufacturing the products. Next, please. This is the advanced uh, recycling. Uh, this is how the plastic is made. Uh, this is plastic is basically the byproduct of uh, oil and they convert to monomers, monomers to polymers, polymers to plastic resin, and then plastic product. Plastic resin a process make the plastic product. Then plastic products are sold to the consumer. Consumer then dispose after using them. Then disposal goes to three places. One, you go for reuse, like you use the bottles and bags and house, or some people also use them. It goes to the mechanical recycling. Mechanical recycling means, again, you make a polymers, uh, like you make a granules, and then granules will be used to make uh, uh, plastic resin and go for the plastic product. Then chemical recycling is that basically you are converting those plastics into the monomers once again. This is a chemical recycling, which is 0.83% as on today. 97% is this one, mechanical recycling. So this has a huge potential to convert the monomers, which can go to making a polymers. Once again, many industries, many uh, organizations are supporting now the, for the creation of the monomers. Next, please. Next, please. Now, recycling type, uh, as I explained to you, we'll skip this slide. Next, please. Now selecting the appropriate location, how to select the appropriate location. You have to see whether you get the input at right time or not, what are the market is there, power and fuel supplies are there, what you need a water, plenty of water uh, to wash the uh, plastics. So you need to have the good water supplies. Next please. What are the climatic conditions for investment of the construction like that? Transportation, whatever the transportations are there easily available to transport the input as well as the output also. Waste disposal, what are the regulations and laws of the local states and the governments also there. Availability of skill and the non-skill labels uh, based on the uh, stability of labor rate also, because it varies state to state. Then regulatory laws, uh, building codes and all those things. Taxes, state and local taxes, whatever is available. Then site characteristics control, control the site, soil structure, kaisa hai aapka? Then community factors, rural or urban housing costs, because your labor is going to stay, you need to consider all those things. Vulnerability of water, uh, wartime attack. Suppose if you're going to be step, uh, something near border areas, so you have to think about it. Uh, flood and fire control, what are the, your uh, areas under uh, water prone areas or seismic zone or not like that. Next please. So this is the way how you have to select the places. What are the statutory requirements to start a company? You have to register your company with ROCs. You need a other and part card of the company, GSC registration, online registration with ODM, EMA, and MSME, approval from state and pollution control board and CPCB, and any approval from your local bodies or local communities. Next, please. This is the plant and machinery. This is a simple uh, grinder where you uh, put your plastic product and you got this type of the chips out of it. This is a normal grinder that is also part of the recycling. You get the material, you convert the chips and supply to the who are converting the uh, grain use like this one. So this is a plastic extruder. So this chips is converted into grain use by using this machines. This is the basic uh, uh, recycling of the uh, plastic this is the pet recycling plant where you, you know recycle the pet bottles this is a plant where you have to know uh, use this plants to recycle the pet bottles to make the chips and the grains next please this is a chemical recycling plant which i show you 0.83 percent is the chemical recycling these type of plants are being used to convert the plastic into uh, 
uh, value added oils and other chemicals through chemical recycling next is cost analysis basically it depends on the cap uh, what process you are going to use what is the capacity you are going what material you are going to process what location what is the capacity you are looking for what product you are going to make it whatever plastic uh, plant and machine you are going to use it how much area is required and some other miscellaneous expenses i'll show you some uh, brief data next please this is a uh, projected or estimated cost for a pet bottle recycling plant so you need you need a almost uh, uh, your recycling cost come to around 10 crore 61 lakh rupees selling cost come to around uh, 28 rupees per kg if you process uh, 4320 metric tons per year then your sales value comes to around 12 crore rupees gross profit comes to 1.4 crore and the net profit comes to after 35 percent come is around one plus approximately and roi comes to around 15 to 18 months so this is a very uh, estimated one and just to understand the values if you reduce your uh, uh, capacity this is a 500 uh, 500 kgs per hour is the capacity of this plant and which is producing 4320 metric ton per annum and this is the valuation of that one if you go if you change this capacity these values will change as accordingly next please this is a very uh, means a generalized idea means how which one use uh, how much they get the people the waste collectors those are the rack pickers they collect 14 to 50 rupees kg of the pet bottles they sell it to the kabadiwala kabadiwala then segregate and clean it and send it to 25 kg rupees kg to the trader or the uh, people who are in between and then they sell it to around uh, to 30 to 40 rupees and to recyclers and the recycler do everything they remove the labels and caps and rings and then clean wash and everything and then sell it from 55 to 100 rupees plus depends on the quality of the recycled material next please thank you so much friends and uh, just Please, I always say that please adopt the mantra of refuse, reuse, reuse, recycle, recover, redesign, rethink, and reduce the plastic consumption. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you, Rajkumar ji. Uh, I'm sorry, there is some uh, technical issue in my video, so I'm not able to uh, no, no, the video. Yeah, but it was a very good, uh, you know, kind of an eye opener kind of, uh, presentation. Uh, although a lot of things were said and uh, I think uh, many of us, uh, you know, felt that, that it would be uh, more detailed explained, but uh, I'm sure uh, there will be many questions which I'll put it to you at the end of the session. Uh, definitely. With that, I would now like to uh, welcome Mr. Purshottam uh, to, uh, you know, take his uh, presentation. Yeah. Please upload Mr. Purshottam's presentation. Can I start? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Purushottam uh, Adwani. I have a plastic recycling business and I also do consulting for uh, plastic recycling and uh, sustainable materials for a few corporates. So uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, people here attending are looking for some to start some business. So basically, they want a problem statement. So here, as uh, Mr. Rajkumar ji covered uh, nicely, we have a very big problem statement here because past few decades, we have generated a lot of plastic waste in millions of tons and thrown in environment, either in land or sea. And we created so big problems so that now you can look for many, say, solutions for this and uh, create startups to address this problem. So quickly touch upon a uh, uh, couple of uh, those uh, issues just to re-emphasize uh, on the uh, problem front. Can you please move to next slide? Next slide, please. Yeah. The, uh, if you see the the plastic uh, generation or waste generation, uh, one small example. If you see now, whatever plastic waste is generated because of uh, our behavior our mismanagement of uh, plastic waste, uh, majority of the plastics are uh, ending up in oceans. Say today for every five fish, there is one plastic part in the ocean. 
and 2050 there will be equal number of fish and plastic parts in the ocean one big problem second problem is most of these plastics are made out of uh, fossil fuel so taking out oil from the uh, uh, earth so that as plastic consumption is in increasing the oil what we are taking out is increasing a lot the problem what is the problem if you take out oil is it's co2 generating co2 and leaving it in environment see the uh, ecological balance was nicely maintained till past few decades where uh, in atmosphere whatever ca carbon dioxide comes from uh, earth or comes from sea the equal amount was going back the only thing remaining is whatever we are taking out the oil so the converting that into carbon dioxide that is remaining in atmosphere so if this continues so you, you have heard a lot of things about uh, global warming and all those things the point here is we need to reduce usage of oil for making plastics so one big way to do that is use recycled plastics which is already uh, exist there which is made and used in very short life so next slide please yeah and second problem is with plastics say what we do is say think about a small disposable cup plate or spoon it takes several months to make that and get it into our hand our usage is only few minutes and we throw basically we are living in a linear economy produce use and discard with that especially in plastics economy 95 percent is getting lost only five percent is coming back into system basically we are losing wealth also and if you see actual recycling in the global is less than 10 percent so it's a big problem one side other side we can consider that as a big opportunity so far this has not been done but the entrepreneurs who are looking for doing business this is definitely a big opportunity to consider next slide please yeah so why this recycling business is attractive is your raw material see already it is available there in everywhere and it is free or it is minimal cost only cost involved is how you process that so the, you start with say almost low cost material and the think of adding a lot more value to that to that by recycling so that's where this business seems very attractive next slide please yeah and secondly when people were, were in current generation when they are looking for starting up new uh, say businesses so this is something related to environment and you can proudly go and say everywhere i'm doing something good to environment this always combines with say your aspirations to do some business when there is a passion plus there is business growth and money so the chances of success and your satisfaction levels will be higher when you do this kind of business next slide please yeah and recycling has been happening for decades right i mean we here especially in india recycling rates are be, uh, much higher that is because of poverty i mean rag pickers and all they pick so that they make they can make some living out of it it is there for so many years but why it is different now why everybody is talking recycling now especially if you go to any plastic exhibition or any show globally every plastic company talks about recycling why now the one reason in india scenario you can say the last few years i have put the, the how it evolved you can read later last few years it is evolving in really really good way where governments are uh, say uh, putting accountability on the manufacturers of course the main culprit uh, is like consumer but there's a 1 billion consumers every day use this plastic control so government cannot punish them or there is no enough uh, uh, say infrastructure to punish them so conveniently what they do is they put the onus on the manufacturer so many ways it is good too so now every packaging manufacturer or whoever is producing and selling the material that is doing bad to environment government strictly made them accountable next slide please so what it says next slide please So I have put very small brief about EPR. I mean, there are a lot more big Bible on this to understand. So government made corporates accountable. Whatever packaging they generate and sell, they need to recycle. And this year, the recycling rate should be 100%. If some corporate sells 100 ton of plastic a year in the form of chips packet or chocolate, so they are accountable for recycling 100 ton. 
so that's where the uh, say opportunity opens up now they look for who can recycle because they cannot recycle say now these corporates are desperately looking for who can supply them recycling material or who can recycle their material so we have only few army players now there are hundreds of army players are required if you precisely get into what these people want next slide please Yeah, and uh, when we talk about recycling, see, this is a very big area. It is not one simple thing to understand and uh, think about what machine to put and all. Where there are there are variety of plastics and variety of applications. We can say say, say normal pack, uh, flexible packaging, rigid packaging, MLP, PVC, PP. So many people get confused, especially people coming from other than plastics background. It takes some time for them to understand what where is the potential and where to start so there are a lot of questions they will ask so i listed some questions here so these are the questions we should be talking in detail it is very difficult to arrive at uh, what recycling you can do or what equipment required my point here is so we need elaborate discussion to narrow down what exactly works for you next slide please I just put a couple of uh, important examples here which are getting recycled. One is PET. We all know water bottle. So maybe some people may remember 10 years, 15 years back, all these water bottles were lying in environment here and there on, on near roadside and all. But today, if you go and search for water bottle, it is very difficult to find single water bottle lying in the area where people or rack pickers can access because there's a huge demand for this. Secondly, water bottle business, recycling business is highly organized now because this, this polymer is uh, easy to identify, easy to separate because of majority or water bottle and it's easy to segregate in the rag picker level. And today uh, with uh, modified policies like government also made policies where water bottle waste can be recycled into water bottle. That made a big change. And a lot of people got into this business already, and it is going wonderfully. It really addressing the recycling problem. Other things recently picking up are in packaging. Again, thanks to EPR, because other packaging which are pollution causing are typically the LDPE for uh, flexible packaging, bags, covers, and all, and HDPE for your shampoo bottles, all these cosmetics bottles, and all. That is the area now. Uh, corporates or who are the manufacturers, basically brand owners, looking for recycled material. This is now after maybe few years, this will look like similar to PET industry, which will get organized. Next slide, please. Yeah, what to do to get into PET recycling? So, Mr. Rajkumar already showed you the say PET recycling uh, uh, say process or machinery required. Again, in recycling, there are several stages. So if anybody wants to get into this business, they really want to sit and understand their strengths are where they want to play. It starts from segregation or say rag picker collecting. From rag picker, it is going for uh, places where uh, they uh, wash it and they bale it and they cut it. Then they sort it. Each stage can be a separate company and each stage there can be a lot of innovations possible or how you sort. Today, a sorting machinery costs say 15 to 20 crore, a good one, high capacity one. Even people can think of say innovating something there. Those also open up for uh, your startup ideas. Then once that is then then comes to the actual recycling or palletizing process where you need an extruder. Then you palletize and give it to bottle maker or somebody something else you can make out of it. The important point here is recycling can be done with a very minimal investment. Say I will put a 10 lakh worth extruder uh, and run it. You can still make granules, but they won't qualify to the requirements of brands. When we talk about Coke or Pepsi want, wants to use this material in their bottle, they look for clean. That requires a really good extruder and it uh, they also require FSA or FDA, these kind of things. To do to achieve these, these investments are really big. But in India, there are a lot of investments coming from abroad and investment companies to take care of this part. That's where if you if anybody interested specific to pet, then we need to sit across 
and really see so what is your interest and what is the investment required what investment you can attract from outside like that next slide please yeah so pet can go to bottles because other thing is because of epr today brands are paying 20 30 percent higher than virgin material say today your hdp virgin you get 90 to 100 rupees the guard rays itc's unilevers of the world are paying 140 rupees for recycled material because only few organized players having right equipment right machinery they invested right process then only it makes sense otherwise there are thousands of recycler in plastic uh, industry industrial parks areas doing all these things for ages but when they make that product and try to go and sell in the market they don't even get 50 percent of the uh, price so it is important for you to understand what should be your play and how do i get that premium and what is the investment required to get that premium and this mr Ashkumarji again talked about uh, modiji's jacket see pet has been recycled into uh, cloths or say bed sheets or blankets for ages probably in all our life some or other time we would have touched the towels and blankets things like that but somebody promoted recently that's what it makes difference that's a marketing strategy when prime minister wears many people think it is new but it is not new surat has been doing it for maybe past 20 30 years so there are many products you can do for example ikea uses lot of recycled pits to make its plastic products if any if you walk into ikea store if you observe there are hundreds of products made of recycling material and their company mandated to use recycled materials so that's where the opportunity is there and you get paid really premium for those things next slide please yeah then uh, pet we talked about and polyolefins typically polyethylene and uh, say polypropylene these kind of uh, materials they here the investments are relatively lower because the uh, equipment costs are lower but still the key part which is called extruder to make gran granules that should have really good cleaning capacity vacuum capacity and all reason being this uh, packaging material gets into garbage a lot of food waste organic waste gets into the material unless you uh, clean it you can put back into similar application so nobody wants something bad into our packaging material so if you again want to play in the premium uh, segments you need to really look for those kind of equipment where four or five global players make those and they really pay back upfront investments will be really high say eight crore ten crore kind of extruder but if you really see what you can make out of it so that is really pays back next slide please Yeah, so there are, these are like whatever PET polyethylenes we talked about is considering the EPR aspects because uh, EPR is mandated and the uh, corporates have no choice than paying higher, but there are other things also possible like plastic to waste, uh, uh, waste to oil. So this is like pyrolyzing, breaking the polymer chain into smaller molecule and making oil, which is a, uh, which can be a replacement to diesel oil in some burning applications like uh, boilers, things like that. That is a uh, known technology variable for many years, but off late it is picking up because this also came into EPR. Secondly, there are many companies investing in making a better chemicals out of it. Say you make monomer again, again use it to make a new polymer. So that that is another vertical somebody can consider if they are interested in that. Other than this, there are like engineering plastics, like say your automotive parts, electronic parts, your mobile phone parts. So all these things, uh, though EPR doesn't cover that, many corporates are interested. And today you go and see in Google search any BMW, Audi, anybody, any car company, they publish something, we are using recycling plastic. When Microsoft, they made a big news out of making a mouse out of uh, waste from the ocean, uh, picking up plastic waste. So these are specific to corporates. So for this, you need to work closely with corporates. Say, go to Samsung and say, I'll give you this clean material, which is made of recycling, and these are the properties. I am sure the business opportunities open up in this segment also. Next slide, please. Yeah, so challenges already uh, we spoke. 
Uh, biggest challenge is so we don't get a clean waste, right? It's it's garbage. Uh, it's garbage. Basically, uh, it, everything is mixed there, right? So clear collection, sorting, washing are big challenges. At the same time, every challenge is an opportunity. So one can look for some innovation and say setting up a separate unit for that activity. Though these challenges are really big challenges, but every stage of it, the opportunities exist. Next slide, please. Yeah. So the as I told repeatedly, there are too many plastics and there are too many opportunities today. It's very difficult to uh, really decide something in a half an hour slot, uh, what machinery required or what is the investment and all. Serious people, I propose them to sit across with us with Solution Buggy team and we'll be present and we will study your case. So we'll study what is your strength which area you want to participate, where in the market you are strong, right? And we'll give you different uh, case scenarios. Like if you do this, this is the opportunity and this is the returns you can get. So then it makes sense for us to take up to next level. Next slide, please. So uh, the takeaway here is the this problem is too big for globally. Every country is struggling everywhere. Uh, these waste metals are available, okay? Huge raw material base is available and recycling rates are really, really low. Anybody gets into these kind of businesses have tremendous growth potential if they upfront really narrow down and strategize. And money is also not a problem. I'll show some examples. Next slide, please. So, uh, interested people, please make a note of these company names and later you study about these companies. There are a bunch of startups in past maybe five, six years in India have done excellent job in organizing this sector because recycling business, there's nothing new you are going to do because all there are a lot of recycling companies already present in India. There is a collection mechanism, but everything is unorganized. Really to do a recycling business, what one needs to do is you need to take unorganized business into an organized business. Basically bring all these companies into a system, whether how you collect, how you wash, how you recycle, how you position to customer. One quick example I can tell, uh, in the automotive, for example, pick any automotive Honda or Honda, these kind of cars, I'm sure there's a lot of recycling material is getting into system by some or other way. Generally what happens is the part maker molder, he uses a certain amount of recycle, but he never tells that to OEM. Now, say if you want to make that organized, you work with OEM and you educate OEM that this metal can go into this much portion and pass on the benefit to OEM. So both can enjoy, that's what is happening. This kind of making unorganized to organized sector. Next slide, please. See, these companies are, say, they are from different backgrounds. They are not from plastic background. At least some of them I know. Next slide, please. So, yeah. So, this is another company, probably the largest in India in terms of uh, uh, business model. Uh, so, I can say innovation in terms of collection and uh, uh, making a platform to recycle material. Please study these companies in depth, so you'll get a lot of idea. Next slide. Yeah, this is another company. I know them closely. These are like from IT background. So they have innovated how they collect and how they uh, say make uh, these rag pickers and kabadi walas and all participating in the system and uh, making them grow along with these people. So basically brought unorganized people into organized sector and created a wonderful company. Today they are supplying to very big brands at a real good uh, premium prices. So next slide, please. And there's, uh, there's a investment company called Circulate Capital. Please study this also, whoever is interested. They have invested into bunch of companies in India and globally. There's a huge funds available with them backed by Dow, Pepsi, these kind of companies 
they are searching for organized recyclers. The important aspects here is ethical recycling. They don't want to work with somebody who cheat. See, many people, when they talk to me on recycling, when I say their customers paying 40% premium for a recycled HDP, say, garbage base 140, where virgin is 100, first question comes in mind, why can't I buy virgin and put it in a bag and say recycle and sell? No, that is what strictly controlled by uh, EPR rules and also companies like Circulate and all investing into people who are ethically doing this. If someone is ethically doing, set up these process and innovating these business models, today money is not a problem. If you go to their website and see who, where and all they invested how, and how much they invested, so it's really amazing. So that's where, so if you need to have passion and you narrow down, money is not a problem. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's all. So that's what I wanted to share a very high level scenario where you understand what the market is so that, so we can initiate a discussion and we can sit across and really identify your needs and help you. And we can help you in every stage or every part of this entire recycling uh, process and in your project. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Purushottam. Like always, uh, you basically, rather than giving answers, you help uh, the entrepreneur to find the answers by himself. So, you know, uh, very definitely a very, uh, you know, informative uh, presentation. And uh, what Mr. Purushottam highlights uh, time and again is that uh, an entrepreneur who wants to get into not just plastic recycling but any industry uh, needs to do a lot of uh, you know soul searching by himself uh, wherein he needs to understand not just the budget or the location where he wants to set up the unit but the reason why he wants to get into this uh, business uh, of course money is one part uh, but is it uh, what are his skill sets uh, is it b2b that he wants to get into is it b2c uh, you know, and then within uh, plastic recycling, there are you know various models that you can get into. Uh, what part of the value chain he he wants to get in? So these are some of the real questions that an entrepreneur has to answer uh, before he can you know plunge into putting in money and uh, you know actually setting up the unit. Uh, because uh, we at Solution Buggy also want to. Uh, you know, over the last uh, six and a half years, what we've been trying to do is uh, encourage uh, entrepreneurs by uh, not giving them the answers uh, directly, but uh, asking the right questions. Uh, why you want to get into the sector? What is your, uh, you know, core strengths? Uh, what is it that you lack? So these are some of the typical questions that have to be definitely answered before you can plunge into any uh, uh, sector. Uh, within manufacturing because uh, part of it is also because a lot of uh, investment goes up front um, although there are a lot of government subsidies and bank loans that you can look at uh, but you should also understand that any manufacturing sector is capex heavy so these are uh, definitely the right questions that needs to be answered uh, thank you uh, so with that uh, i would now uh, call upon mr uh, shiv rao uh, so we will, uh, you know, take upon uh, what what is the opportunities and uh, what is the uh, perspective uh, uh, for plastic recycling. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Baghi and the team and the attendees. So my presentation, I would, you know, go very. Uh, I prefer. I am myself a startup, right? And I was, as I previously told, I have worked in oil and gas mining and then I came back to India to work on clean India projects. So specifically, I would like to have a little bit of interaction, which I think might not be possible, but still if people can showcase in the chat box, how many people are trying to run a poll, sir. Okay. So if yeah, the poll so, is yeah, yeah. So by that time, trying to basically understand what is the uh, audience uh, uh, category of the audience. Uh, and uh, the kind of investment that they are doing. So the content today will I do with introduction, product development, regulation and compliance, future trends, and three R zero waste introduction of brief. So next slide, please. So my background I've told. Let's go to the next page. 
Yeah, so this is what you know I want to start with. Uh, and uh, as already my previous speakers have already told about the different types of plastic and what they are used, I just want to specifically talk about what is the growth has been since a couple of years. And the source is from WWF 2019. You see that the growth in the last decade, 40% has grown in the plastic. So today, if uh, government talks about single use plastic and plastic is bad. So today we are living with plastic. If you see in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, in your balcony, you will see plastic everywhere. You will be able to count more plastic than any other material. So that cannot be you know, removed from the lifestyle. So what can be done today is one of the areas is recycling. So next step. So basically, I just want to take you through, you know, some people might be students, might be, you know, having an engineering background. So I'll try to cover, you know, various aspects as a person when people come, what sort of things they will have. So as you see, there's a raw material extraction, then a monomer production. So I specifically worked in petrochemical complexes this is one of the world's uh, biggest plant being built in Kuwait for Kuwait Industrial Petroleum Corporation, where we have the project cost was close to 13 billion US dollars. And then, you know, from the monomers, it went to polymers, polymerization, and then plastic products. So there are various, you know, kinds of plastic which is produced in a petrochemical complex. Thereafter, these plastics are generally, you know, India also is uh, having a production facilities. But a lot of material is also imported from China and Kuwait and other Middle East countries. So there are a lot of distribution channels set up across India and these uh, companies who buy from them and make products. So definitely, you know, there could be an area of interest where people can become a player in the first segment itself. So you can come up with your own product using chemical recycling, as I said. Uh, and then you can be a player in this segment. Then there is a player where you can be in the plastic supply chain itself. You can buy this product, raw material, recycled uh, materials, and then you can create your own product. And actually to tell you, uh, I when I started in, the idea of my coming back to India was happened on 28th of February, 2020. And then by March, I was, seeing that I will go into plastic recycling. And I was choosing that particular segment of going an end product. Today, even today, there is no a single brand in India who would proudly say, I make a product made up of recycled plastic. So again, that is a virgin market. Anybody of who you, uh, there is so much of recycling happening. But that product taking up people like this, uh, what recently, you know, Modi ji has uh, the RPET, that is again, it was happening 10 years or 20 years also later, it was happening, but it was not predominant. So there are so much innovation can happen in the product making itself. Then the third uh, area where the collection starts. And again, this is where my interest is uh, presently, where I help uh, work with the societies to collect segregated waste. So today, when I say, you know, I've given awareness to 750,000 people, the, there are almost 750 families whom I give free service and they started with one family. One lady called me one day and said, Shiv, I want to segregate my plastic. Can you help me? So I said, yes, because I one if I stop, if I say no, that lady's motivation will get stopped. And today that one lady has made me grow to 755 uh, households and very soon I'm coming up with my solid waste management where I will be, you know, taking up a lot of societies in Gurgaon and Delhi area. So coming to the collection, this collection can go to various areas as said already incineration is today. I would say close to India's uh, out of the 56 million tons of waste being collected, only 50% is collected. And out of that 50%, only 50% is processed. So most of this, you know, is going to incineration, then landfill and littering. Even today, you will see a lot of, you know, this uh, rag pickers are roaming around in the roads and collecting this waste. 
So I will just littering, then it goes to degradation. There could be chemical degradation, mechanical degradation, biodegradation, fragmentization, and then mineralization. Whereas the other areas of recovering the resources could be chemical recovery, energy recovery, and mechanical recycling. Next slide, please. So what is happening to the plastic production and uh, what happens to that particular material in a longer time? So you see that you know the primary plastic of 250, 2500 million tons of primary plastic out of the 8,300 tons, they are used only once, 5,800 million, out of which 100 million is being recycled. So today, even if you are coming and the potential of the growth, what is not being recycled, if people change their mind process. So again, today, I would request each one of you. This is where I, I when I say 750,000, it comes to various awareness programs I give to various channels where I get an opportunity that, you know, if at all, we don't start as an individual to segregate at our household, at least the government talks about two dustbins but if you see my logo i talk about four dustbins so any society i work with i tell very clearly green is for organic waste blue is for paper and cardboard orange is for plastic red is for e-waste and metal this i have also proposed to the ministry of urban authority if i can successfully showcase that this is working and i'm able to generate revenue positively this can actually help india's gdp grow by a certain percentage directly because as we are saying the circular economy is of 90 billion tons then this is a comprisation of that and that is how the government is pushing a lot today on the circular economy policy and national uh, recovery energy plan sure next slide please So as already said by a couple of other speakers as well, so packaging industry is contributing maximum onto today's plastic production and being utilization. Then comes the building and construction industry, then the textile industry, other sectors, consumer institutional products, transportation, electrical electronics, and industrial machinery. So as Mr. Purushottam was telling, if at all you want to enter into any sector, see your sweet spots see the area where you want to do and see who could be your clients if you are in an area of let us say in tirpur where you see textiles could be the uh, industry who will be your end customer then what sort of material they want can you get that raw material and can you make it a business so i'll also showcase being a you know a myself a startup entrepreneur uh, one of the most challenging things as a startup uh, if at all you want to make a msme which today we are talking about mainly msmes but if you have a strategy and growth thinking of taking it to a multinational company which i have for passion for my uh, company when i say my brand is a world without waste i want to take it to international level with my you know whatever i'm trying to do so if you have that then you will have a lot of challenges with respect to funding with respect to your team building so these are the areas where I try to specialize in what I felt in the last three years, where I failed, where I have positive connections, where I'm able to leverage that connects. That is where my interest is. Next slide, please. So a typical uh, plastic waste recycling plant, you know, there could be a very sophisticated equipments across uh, the country. But if you see out of the 4,000 plus recyclers, there are people who are working with a very, very nominal cost, which is not ethical, which they are not into a pollution control board license. You know, most of the Calcutta, West Bengal area where we see so much which happens. I belong to Calcutta myself. There's most of the unethical uh, practices of recycling happens. So there is a cost from 10 lakhs onwards. People are setting up. Some are just, you know, crushing the pet bottles and giving it to the other clients. No washing, nothing that is happening. Uh, and the various products so i just wanted to ask if you see the last uh, there are number three five six nine eleven twelve seventeen i wrote something can somebody put in the chat box what are these things i want to be more interactive to see people are really interested in listening to the thing rather than you know just uh, 
able to get some answers let me see somebody from solution buggy are we getting some answers in the chat box are people able to put not yet sir okay no there are some answers in uh, chat box uh, okay UNSDG, got it. SDG, yeah. uno Rehan, goals, yeah, Rehan, Rehan, rudrashish yes you are right there are sustainable development goals so yeah. undp has you know recommended 17 sd sdg goals and i specifically for the first year i worked on four goals and now this year i'm working on seven goals which again helps our community and uh, our country to take it forward in terms of sdg reporting which helps getting more investment in our country and you know growing so one example I would like to give you know Uflex is one company which is based out of Noida, and they are coming up with very innovative solutions and uh, uh, their sustainability goals also you know they have expanded across the world today. I remember they were my neighbors when I used to stay in Noida and uh, in 2000 when I started my career. But uh, from there onwards, Mr. You know how they grown and they take multiple plants across the world so this is the you know this is what is india is all about if you're able to dream and if you have passionate about yourself and your team your team is very important in this you know if you want to make it big in your life you cannot walk alone you have to take, build a team and that's what i'm doing i have failed miserably in building my team and that's how i've been a bit slow otherwise i would have you know raised a couple of rounds of my investment and i would be in, in a at least set up two three plants as of now but again i'm learning right i'm not given up i'm uh, raising my first round next uh, quarter and then i'm, I'm showing facing my uh, path so next slide please so in terms of regulation and compliances uh, you should be aware of three major bodies which uh, you will be interacting with one is central pollution control board second is state pollution control board based on whichever state you are uh working and then the ministry of environment so specifically if at all you know there are a couple of states who are very the dynamism of that particular state control board is very good so states like uh, karnataka maharashtra goa rajasthan uh, and recently bihar also are working very you know innovatively and uh, they are helping startups to build that e ecosystem so uh, if at all you are in any of these states you have a good chance that you know you will get full support irrespective of whatever red tapeism is there in india it will be there uh, you have to uh, you know work out uh, with that uh, but uh, the policies the government has come up with huge policies which are you know back to back they have come up with the entire epr you know now there will be uh, plastic is already there e waste is already there so a lot of you know in terms of circular economy green credits they have recently launched so the government is very very you know promising in terms of circular economy and recycling is one of the parts of that so next step please so just in brief you know as uh, mr prasadam was telling you know to research about the project that is very very important and I would say, you know, uh, you should spend. Uh, in my case, what I did is I jumped after, you know, working 23 years. I thought I want to do something. I just made my research a bit. I did a course from Switzerland on solid waste management. And then I talked to a few people and I just jumped on doing this project. But I would suggest most of you people who if you are young and if you're in the age of 30 to, you know, where you're doing your first enterprise you should research a lot so if you like okay g and uh, solution buggy to understand the what you want to solve so as sir was telling you know there are problem is there okay there are problem is there what what you would try, like to solve what particular plastic you would like to solve do you have a customer for that you know i was in one of the conference yesterday uh, so there it was told that you know it is worth spending one lakh rupee to buy a market research if at all you want to think of, you know, a billion dollar business or, you know, $10 million business, you spend that money, you know, you understand what is the segment you want to enter. Then you discuss with, again, companies like Purushatamji and uh, Solution Buggy to create a project report for yourself. But be involved, I would suggest. As a startup, you know, we think, okay, we have given to a CA, let him do everything. 
no be involved in that report making it will make you uh, you know learn as a founder or the ceo a lot of things then sec then then the project report itself you will come up with you know based on your capacity based on your land what sort of you know uh, land and location is required which will work for your organization then you apply for ct i'm assuming you know you form a company you have your you know incorporation and just the other things then you apply for ct from the state pollution control board specifically you start construction or fabrication of site you install equipments based on the project report what sort of equipment you are trying to build try to uh, be uh, i'm saying okay you have to see for the cost but definitely see for the quality also because your end customer if you i specifically prefer based on your end customer if he's looking for premium quality you have to install good quality equipment then you get a cto which is consent to operate and cte is consent to establish this is a predominantly most of the states will have similar uh, document but some states might have different so you have to check with your state pollution control board and then if you want to enter uh, into the epr uh, horizon you have to register yourself as a plastic waste processor if at all you are into waste recycling in the cpcb so that you get epr uh, get into the ecosystem of epr which is enterprise producer responsibility and then you can start production next slide please so these are the various uh, no examples of uh, these are just examples so from the state pollution control board from uh the uh, one more uh, body is specifically we fit all today which i will talk in the future and opportunities growth of today's plastic environment uh is nothing but you know coming up with bioplastics so that again is a uh, certificate is given from cipet which is a center for plastic expansion in uh, industrial development and then cpc yeah next slide please so uh, in terms of epr categorization they have you know recently they were previously two three and now four so rigid plastic and the second layer multi layer flexible plastic is category 2 then category 3 multi layer plastic packaging and then category 4 plastic sheets and then these are the various documents required for getting the registration done if at all any you know people are there who would uh, as a client you want to register then these are the documents required and then specifically on epr they call it pibo so which is p is for producer i is for importer b is for brand owners and then p is for plastic waste processors and the registration portal is active now and most it is one of the most active epr uh, websites today which is being fully uh, taken care of next slide please so this is where my interest is in the future you know because if you see my website if somebody goes you will see my first value is 247 innovation so i don't i wanted to be if i do something in the plastic i have to be very innovative and you know where i could be successful chances are high next slide please so this is the future trend in terms of you know what is going to be happening in terms of fossil fuel based and biodegradable waste uh, Uh, products so if you see you know conventional plastic pe pp and pet which is on the left hand corner and then how the bio plastics have already emerged in terms of pe pet pa and ptt and then the bio plastics which is pla pha pbs and starch blends i was in one of the uh, events in london one plastic uh, company has come up with a innovation where they are able to sell to l'oreal a component of plastic made up of bio uh bio bio material and it is being used in the sun lotion sunscreen lotions so a lot of innovation is happening you know couple of startups i have met recently they are raising investment across in the western world and then the uh, oxo biodegradable bioplastic which is also existing in india ppat and pcl next slide please so again on the bioplastic itself you know there has been a huge growth in the last uh, decade and we have seen that uh, you know thousands of tons are being uh, manufactured various uh, world wise there is lot of you know discussion that is it really biodegradable is it compostable but it is much it is comparatively better than a uh, traditional plastics 
and uh, that is how in india as well as abroad a lot of you know companies have already nurtured and uh, this is also a good growth area next slide please so the if you see the you know present uh, what is the market in terms of 2.11 million tons the bio based market is close to 44.5% and biodegradable is 55.5% and the good growth is seen in the polyethylene pet and 1.8 and pa whereas in the biodegradable pba it is leading 13.4% and pbs for 4.3 so there is lot of innovation is possible and i would recommend if you have scientists in this uh, uh, group to you know see that what sort of you know innovation can be done in india so we become the market leader and the whole world is looking for solutions we should play and take the advantage of this next slide please so this is what is happening in terms of various opportunities you can play you know in the ecosystem anywhere so you uh, you can become a you know a system like a kabaddi wala is one area of people you know where you can become a electronic based kabaddi wala where you collect material you know this is one area where i am trying to work with the society directly and be that uh, you know modern kabaddi wala then uh, there is a position, positioning like pet flakes right this is one area where is growing quite good in india then you can otherwise go into traditional plastic recycling which is also a good otherwise you can go into aggregator of plastic so when you get you know this aggregation is itself is a big business when it's set from 14 rupees to 23 rupees and 23 rupees to 40 rupees so in that margin you know what you are doing is you are just being an aggregator collecting the material bailing it and then selling it to the recyclers and you get a good margin in this mrf is one area of my interest which i want to establish again innovation i want to establish something which can work with optical sensor based so i was uh, in london in one of the recycling uh, plants and even in london they are not using so if at all in india actually sir uh, mr purushottam showed company called nepra so nepra uses uh, in their pune plant opti optical sensor based uh, mrf which is built by ishita robotic again a friend of ours so we are you know a good bunch of 20 to 40 startups have come up in india recycle is again one good example which sir has already showed where you know they motivate us so you know they motivate us that we can become big players as well and then you can go into plastic manufacturing so these are the various you know where where you can see yourself you know you should choose and then discuss with the experts like mr purushottam and solution buggy who can help you to take it forward next slide please so again you know as i mentioned the future would be in the terms of bioplastics where you could you know uh, try to innovate you can uh, again this is linked with agriculture so that is how you are solving two problems for the country then the recycle content there is a possibility of how what i am also looking at in electronic parts so i am in, specifically into electronic waste so electronics uses pc abt abs pbat these are very specialized plastics but these are not recycled very easily so can we use this material and make a certain component in the electronic industry which again you will have people like samsung apple they will be more interested to buy but again it needs lot of r and d and uh, to take it forward and then arpet to yarn has been very old but recently because of pm wearing this jacket it has come to a limelight next slide please brief introduction of us so e waste management industrial waste management solid waste management and uh, net zero consulting yeah. <coughs> and then we are coming up with a platform for rewarding citizens for sustainable gestures next slide please so specifically we help organizations for epr in e waste and plastic waste and net zero consulting and setting up of plants for electronic waste plastic waste next slide please and as i said we are coming up in application because we want to help the citizens to be a part of this because without them this plastic recycling will not be a successful so we are trying to build a platform where we will give rewards for every action which they are putting for good for planet earth so starting if you are bicycling you are not using uh, 
petrol car you are using a, you know ev you are segregating at source in your house every day you will get certain points so that every day you are you know uh, motivated with your actions and uh, you get quite a good rewards what we have in mind next slide please thank you very much and we are looking for your questions if thank you, you. Uh, thank you mr shiv uh, you know uh, something of a different perspective that you have uh, shared here and uh, definitely with the vast experience that you have had um, across industries and uh, the kind of work that you are uh, trying to do now and also something very innovative with the karma coins um, so i'm sure uh, most of the uh, you know participants who are uh, budding entrepreneurs and uh, people who want to diversify from their current uh, sector will uh, will uh, uh, definitely be interested to see uh, plastic recycling as a sector which they want to get into um, again uh, as ha it has emerged uh, over the last uh, 90 minutes uh, you know you can get into plastic recycling uh, with investments as low as uh, 25 lakhs to uh, investments as high as even uh, 30 to 40 crores so you know it, it basically uh, it, the question now comes back to the entrepreneur himself as to what he exactly wants to do. Uh, before we, uh, you know, wind up, uh, I have a few questions that I'll be asking. Uh, meanwhile, uh, all of you will be able to see a poll on the screen. Uh, I would uh, uh, request you to uh, answer these uh, two questions, uh, which will help us also to understand the audience better. And, uh, you know, any questions that you might have uh, shared with us now and which have gone unanswered, we can reroute it to the right uh, participant uh, the poll is live now uh, you can take a look at it and please answer uh, at the same time uh, i think uh, a question to uh, any of the speakers uh, basically you know people are looking at uh, setting up industries uh, in plastic recycling and obviously you know it it, it, it emerges that it's a very upcoming sector but uh, can you throw some light on what are the cons of this industry and what are the pitfalls that uh, people can generally face? Purushottam ji, can you answer? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, Mr. Gurup said, uh, sorry, I lost the question. Yeah, the question is, the, obviously, there is a lot of potential in this sector, but what are the kind of pitfalls or uh, the uh, difficulties that uh, people can face yeah. and what should they look at? See, absolutely. See, the biggest challenge is uh, the getting the raw material, right? The Because there is material, but there is opportunity. Getting right material or segregated material because today all waste is like everything is dumped together and sent to municipal waste uh, facilities. So with a very, very poor segregation in a consumer level. So because of that, a lot of investments need to be uh, required uh, to really do cleaning, sorting, these kind of things. But the, if somebody uh, works on uh, better segregation mechanisms, I'm sure some companies are working even uh, setting up their own bins to collect the material. Those kind of innovations can help. But biggest challenge is getting the right material. Right. Uh, in continuation to that, uh, Mr. Shiv, you mentioned about MRF. Uh, so basically the recovery, material recovery facilities. So what is the typical cost that one would uh, need to put in to set up an MRF? So see in uh, MRFs in uh, India specifically, you know, uh, I see most of the MRFs are manually segregated where the cost would be somewhere between again 10 to 25 lakhs. Uh, but again, as I said, you know, if you are looking for that type of uh, material, there is a challenge of getting the materials because most of the cities who generate good quantity, they have a, uh, companies assigned by the government. So you will face challenge in getting the uh, contracts unless until you are established player and you are able to you know convince the clients that you can provide a better service. So there is a little bit of yeah. So uh, I would say MRF today, where if at all you are able to also bring the wet waste and uh, compost, 
or use any good solution for the organic waste parallelly you do mrf for the dry waste i think it's a good solution right right thank you uh, one last question i think we have overshot the time limit but uh, rajkumar ji since you are from gujarat uh, you know we have a lot of entrepreneurs coming in from surat and ahmedabad areas uh, what is the kind of uh, you know opportunity for uh, Uh, plastic recycling uh, uh, from Gujarat. Uh, Guru Sir Ji, in Gujarat uh, there are a lot of plastic producers are also there. So uh, as uh, Mr. Shiv also covered and Pushpatam Ji covered PI views, so they can talk to them, they can connect with the plastic producers directly, and they can get the good quality of the industrial waste to recycle it. and along with that uh, uh, gujarat is one of the highest producer of the plastic waste so there are plenty of opportunities to connect with the uh, municipality corporations of the different uh, different cities and uh, gram panchayats to get the those waste and to recycle it so it's a plenty of opportunities in the gujarat itself and in fact the gujarat government and the local pollution control boards are also helping them a lot uh, with the setting up the plants uh, with the approving the things and uh, you no know, providing the uh, coe and cot also like that so there are uh, there are a lot of things which is can be uh, installed in the gujarat uh, and one of the best place to do the business uh, in india after uh, even including the uh, top on the maharashtra also right uh, so i think uh, you know uh, this session has been uh, an eye opener in many cases in many instances and uh, obviously a uh, very good knowledge sharing over the last 90 minutes uh, you know i would like to thank all the speakers uh, starting from rajkumar ji uh, purushottam ji and uh, mr shiv uh, so for having shared uh, your knowledge and uh, also elucidating the uh, facts which you also know very well that plastic recycling is very important but how do we get into it and what are the kind of uh, you know opportunities in this sector was missing so this definitely has helped us in uh, at least uh, breaking the ice but definitely more needs to be done and lot of more doubts have to be cleared uh, so please uh, uh, share these questions that you might have and also you know i would request uh, you know if anybody wants uh, one on one sessions please uh, do write in to us and uh, our team also will keep in touch with you and uh, we could have a session with any of the three experts that you have had Uh, that you have heard uh, until now uh, thank you uh, uh, to all uh, and thank you to the speakers thank you so much mr guru prasad for our, uh, arranging this uh, very informative yes. and interesting webinar and sure. uh, it's a great thing to look forward to all those days to connect one to one as much as possible sure thank you very much take care thank you thank you, thank you.